Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nexus Podcast with Heather and Jimmy, your breakdown of all the important news in the world of Blizzard Entertainment. It's going to be a little bit different this week, but uh, we have a very special episode. Um, as always, you can find previous episodes on nexuspodcast.com, and we're available on all major platforms, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, etc. Um, and if you want to follow us on social Follow the hashtag Nexus Podcast and YouTube.com slash DJ Tyrant for old episodes if you're wanting to see the video side of things. Um, And also, we have a Facebook group. If you search for Nexus Podcast, you will find it there as well. And this is going to be a very special episode, like we said, uh, episode Leyline. Today is November 18th, 2020. And we're having our very first guest on the show, Jeremy De La Rosa, who is the founder and CEO of Leyline a nonprofit out to save the world with the power of a CPU. Um, <laughs> but what we, before we get into that, though, what we like to do always at the top of the show is talk about our week in geek. Um, and since you're our guest, how would you like to go first, uh, Jeremy, and tell us about what you've been playing, what you've been watching. And geeking out on. Yeah, and, and geeking out on. <laughs> All right, sure. Uh, well, well, first, thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Heather, for having me on. Uh, I am... Very excited to be here, very happy. Uh, love what you guys are doing. Uh, so in terms of what I'm playing this, or what I've been playing this week, I mean, I'm working a lot these days, so I don't get a ton of time to, to play, but I really enjoyed Hades, and I'm playing it on mm-hmm. PC right now. Man, the controls are like butter, the art is gorgeous, the, uh, the voice acting and the story is really, really amazing. And I love how they kind of weave the story development through this roguelike experience where we're just constantly dying and uh, (laughs) progressing through. So really one of my top games of the past few years for sure. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, I've I've played Hades a couple weeks ago. I need to get back into it, but it's been really good. I I have the same thoughts as you. It's just like everything about that game is just darn near perfect. Like, Like you said, the controls and everything, but... Yeah, and I don't know if anyone else um, follows the Game Awards. Their nominations came out today, and a lot oh. of nominations came out for Hades, including Game of the Year. So it's in the run in there, which would be, which would be pretty cool yeah. for a for an indie studio like that to to win Game of the Year. Um, very, well um, very well deserved for sure. Uh, but, uh, anything and, else you watching? Uh, yeah, well, actually, uh, so funny enough, uh, earlier this week, or was it yesterday, uh, we played some Heroes of the Storm with some of our team members. Uh, so th- that's been at least a couple of years since I played that game, yeah. so I was awful. It was terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's great, you know, it's, it's so nostalgic, not just from playing Heroes from a while back, but yeah, I love all the Blizzard franchises and characters, so, you know, everything that you see is just, uh... It's always just a blast of nostalgia, so I love playing that. Yeah, uh, who, who do you who do you end up playing, or who's your your favorite in Heroes right now? Uh, right now, um, you know, I I, I always kind of stuck with Malfurion. I kind of tend to like supporting hero classes, um, but I've also enjoyed playing Zagara too. Um, but uh, honestly, I don't have a great repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like have three or four that I just yeah. play all the time, and that's all I can do. Um, and uh, yeah, in terms of uh, movies, you asked, if you ask what I was watching, I would say the latest series that's most impressed me is Raised by Wolves on HBO. Holy I've, crap. I've heard that's- of that, yeah. Um, I was, but it sounds like you're enjoying it. I was a little skeptical because it's a Ridley Scott um, <laughs> project, and those are, those are either really, really good or questionable. I guess yeah, I can say. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, roll the dice, Ridley. Yeah, um, yeah. We had a friend who dragged us to the the last Alien movie. We were we all looked at each other after. We we're like, "What did we just watch?" Oh god, <laughs> I want that out. Now, okay, uh, I have to ask before I even dive deep into Google on this show: Is it creepy, scary, or is it just more mind mm-hmm. like, thought provoking? It is incredibly thought provoking. Uh, it, it's it's it can be very dark in terms of mm-hmm. its outlook on humanity, uh, but just the the vision of the future and what it's like with basically artificial intelligence or robots and androids, uh, what the future of life off of Earth is could be like. Uh, but it's very like post apocalyptic. So some pretty pretty 
pretty heavy stuff. Oh, uh, there you go. Sounds like a weekend late. watch, not a late night watch for me. Oh yeah, yeah. You're gonna want to <laughs> on that, like uh, in the darkness with a bunch of popcorn. Uh, <laughs> that's what I did. Yeah. By myself, like. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a great show. I highly recommend right. it. If you like sci-fi, um, really great. Really I love sci-fi, so I'll have to I'll have to check yeah. that out. Yeah. Um, Heather, what about you? What have you been playing, watching? Um, let's see. I have not been watching a lot. I have my two watch list that just came out was The Crown season four, I believe. That is on my two watch list this weekend. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and then for geeking out, uh, we played a little bit of Warcraft, World of Warcraft, mm-hmm. not Warcraft. Uh, this week for the pre-patch event, I actually came over with my laptop and I was like, oh, my battery will last an hour or two. It barely <laughs> lasted an hour. I did not realize that. Um, but I played a little pre-patch and then I played Solitaire on my Switch because I'm an wow. old lady, apparently. And I need to wow. do this. That's a hell of a choice. <laughs> <laughs> like clubhouse uh, games. I'm like, I just want to do some solitary yeah. and zone out a bit. And that's my geekiness, sadly. For But uh, we're prepping for WoW all next week. Yeah, it's going to be a yeah. lot of WoW. <laughs> yeah. um, as far as myself, um, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. So I watch The Mandalorian like the second it comes <laughs> out. Yes. Um, so I have... Been, been watching on. that, and the latest episode was kind of mind blowing. So it was awesome to to see that. And you've been trying to avoid not giving me spoilers, but yeah. you caved today, which I'm I okay caved. With. Yeah, I caved today, <laughs> but you're. I, I don't think you're. You're. No, I'm not too mad. distraught by this so. though. Um, so Darth Vader is the father. Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> and I I have been watching the Harley Quinn show on yeah. HBO Max, and That's that is. Funny. If you liked Deadpool, yes. you will absolutely oh. love the Harley Quinn show because it's very uh, adult humor. Yes, that's <laughs> that's say, yeah. So if you're looking for something a little more mature, that's pretty. That's pretty high up there. Oh, sweet. Um, I'm gonna add that to my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I and mean, it's animated. You're like, oh, it's an animated show. It's It'll cute. be fine. And then no, very graphic just... deaths. <laughs> yeah. Like for oh, for minute sick. one, gets really graphic. That is my jam. That is my jam. I love uh, pretty hard hardcore stuff yeah exactly. I, mean, I mean it kind of reminds me a little bit of kind of how brutal a lot of anime is like i'm thinking oh, of um helsing kind of on that level of yeah. brutality <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um but as far as games world of warcraft like we had mentioned um i have a group of friends i play overwatch with pretty regularly we mm-hmm. i think we're kind of making it a friday night thing a, a beers and overwatch Why so it's been, it's been a lot of fun gotta um, get to that stockpile you have playing that um but yeah let's get into the why meat here. of everything of why we're here you <laughs> founded this company Leyline. um give us a little bit of background give us your elevator pitch on on yeah. what what uh, ley line is and there's no time sure. restraint no time restraint all right great let's get a 30 minute elevator ride <laughs> <laughs> exactly. there's a lot to cover i did do some research and there's a lot to cover with it and that's amazing yeah, well, thank you. Thanks for, for checking all that out, actually. Um, I, I could begin with describing the organization and the product, or should I go a bit into the background and the pathway to get here? What, what, what would that? Uh, Let's yeah. go into the background because we're okay. a Blizzard focus show. What kind of your journey from Blizzard brought you? to hear. Yeah, I, I figured your listeners might be interested in like understanding why I'm here and relevant <laughs> to the yes. so, uh, so, so yeah, for, for a bit of background, uh, I've been in a tech sector for about uh, over 16 years now. And I've worked at Blizzard Entertainment for the past 10 years. And I served a lot of different roles uh, through my tour of duty. I started off as a senior producer on a web mobile team, so building out all of our sites. Our team built the WoW Armory, D3 sites, Overwatch sites, et cetera, Um, and um, moved over to the Battle.net platform side and where we built out our account systems, our marketplace and the shop, um, as well as like all this like backend functionality to basically host all of the different Blizzard games as a platform and then ultimately the Activision games. Uh, so after about three years doing that, I moved out to Paris to work out of our Europe office. So based in Versailles, so it was, uh, that's like, it was essentially the hub for all of Europe, Middle East, and Africa. 
so it was a really cool office. You know, we had like 27 nationalities in one building. So it was a wow. really amazing uh, um, experience. Uh, so out there, I was in a digital marketing team. So working a lot on our platform development, uh, you know, partnering up with Google and Facebook and all these, you know, big tech companies. Um, so after three years, I uh, came back to Irvine, uh, back to HQ Blizzard, and started working in the esports department. So in esports, I was doing international operations and biz dev. And so traveling around the world, China, Korea, Taiwan, uh, India, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, basically launching all of our different leagues. So, you know, Hearthstone uh, Championship Tour, uh, HTC, uh, the Overwatch League, a um, bunch of our StarCraft tournaments, uh, StarCraft Remastered. So had a had a lot of interesting experiences looking at, I mean, it's a very different business than game dev. It's essentially like an events business and traditional sports and media and sponsorships um, and a ton of like operations and uh, yeah, very different business. Uh, so after that, I, uh, uh, or I, rather during that tenure, I also uh, took the lead on one of our uh, subsidiaries, which is called TESPA. So TESPA was a collegiate program focused around activating students, uh, gaming communities, as well as running esports tournaments in a, uh, in a collegiate space. So here's at a dorm was one of the key highlights of that group. Yeah, I just want to really quickly butt in. Uh, oh, we here. loved Heroes of the Dorm. I still like, have my t-shirt. We went to a... Almost all of them. The only one yeah. I didn't go to was Vegas, uh, oh, but I, I flew out to Seattle for Here's the Dorm there, and that was probably one of the most fun esports experience of yeah. I've been able to have. So, that is fantastic. So thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I would take credit. That definitely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I'm all about the team. I know. Right I know there. it takes a village, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, because, you know, I would say uh, here's what's really interesting is that I do love esports, but I barely watched it while I was working there because oh. I was really in the guts of the systems, mm -hmm. so a lot of business, tech, operations. So I barely got to watch because I was just working my ass off the yeah. whole time. I mean, I got a little bit of that because I actually worked um, for, for Blizzard on contract basis at uh, mm. BlizzCon 2015. Nice. Um, I did um, <laughs> talent management for StarCraft. I, I didn't get to watch much of the StarCraft, yes. even though I was there on the stage <laughs> there the whole time. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, honestly, I totally understand that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, as a Blizzard employee, BlizzCon kind of sucks because like, you got to <laughs> work really hard uh, and you can't really like socialize as much. You don't have a lot, ton of free time. Um, oh, yeah. But I mean, it, still... was, it was a very different experience and I'm glad I had it, but it, it was very different from going as a fan or even a content creator. <laughs> Cause all these people are inviting me to parties and stuff. And I'm like, dude, I just worked Sleep 14 them. hours. I'm going to bed. I'm yeah. sorry. I saw <laughs> that was it. Absolutely. Uh, um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm very fortunate. I, I consider myself an extremely lucky person to have had this opportunity uh, cause it really taught me a lot and, and opened my eyes to a lot of uh, different things. Um, so, you know, coming up to what happened this year, uh, you know, this has been a pretty rough year. A lot of bad things have happened at a very yeah. large scale. And, you know, I got really concerned and I'm still deeply concerned about what's happening uh, to society. Uh, I think we all are because of it. it's a shared experience that we're all going through right now. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, to me, it's like, okay, got it. I recognize there's a problem and I'm just very solutions oriented. I just want to fix problems. And I realize that we can do a lot. We can do a lot more than what we're doing right now collectively. And, um, you know, I've been, I've been thinking about this kind of stuff for many, many years. And my hope was to always figure out how to leverage gaming as this powerful source force for good. And I really wanted to achieve that at Blizzard. So I, were, I was uh, pounding my head against the wall for many years to basically try to inspire more of our product development towards social good initiatives. But the challenge is that there's not a lot of profit in doing good. So uh, generally what happens is that these type of efforts, they just don't get prioritized in the backlog. It's not that people don't want to do these things. It's just that, hey, listen, We've got like fiduciary responsibilities to our shareholders. So let's like prioritize these five projects that'll make us $2 million. Um, that's essentially what you face in the mm -hmm. business, in the private sector. So, um, so you know, I, 
a lot of things happened uh, in the year. Uh, my mom had passed away, and I took some time off to just you know take care of family and myself. And as I was coming back to work, I thought to myself, what am I doing in my life and what do I really want to achieve? I've been dreaming about having some kind of impact, but here I am not doing that and working my ass off and not seeing any real results on people and planet. Uh, I see great results on profit, but that doesn't make me feel any better, you know? Like, I'm, I mean, I'm... I'm uh, filling up other people's wallets right now that uh, aren't necessarily given back. And I kind of want to change that. So uh, so then that's when I decided to say, OK, fine, I've I've been very fortunate. I've had a, a fantastic life, largely because I've just been lucky with the roll of the dice. And I just genuinely think that's not really fair for this to happen for me and for millions and millions and millions of people to be thrust into this horrible situation through no fault of their own. That's literally yeah. what's happening today. Um, and so I just took all of my money, all of all of that, and just donated it to start this uh, organization. And I used that money to basically hire a pretty large, talented team and start to build towards uh, this project, which I am happy to talk about now. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, that's, that's a journey getting here. How large is your team? Are you, are you sharing that publicly? Yeah, no, yeah absolutely. Uh, so yeah, one of our core values is transparency. And we're taking this very radical transparency approach, which is we're sharing everything, our mm -hmm. budget, our live streaming, our meetings. And so and I'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, at this point, we're at about 53 or 55 people working on a project. And it's actually a mix of uh, volunteers, pro bono supporters and consultants, uh, part-timers and full-timers. And it's fascinating because this doesn't happen for startups. Startups are like, you got to pay someone to work for you or the, what's happening now is we just share the vision and a mission and people just want to join. They just mm -hmm. are like, how can I help make this thing happen? Yeah. Um, and so the vision is, sorry for like, yeah, not getting no. Go ahead. It's all important <laughs> yeah. to like the foundation of what you're trying to build. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm very context driven, but it drives my team crazy because I just talk <laughs> forever. So I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it's it's <laughs> all, all intentioned. Um, so yeah, what we are aiming to build is a digital economy of altruism. And what I mean by that is that we essentially want to make sure that you are paid for doing good things in a real world. It is as simple as that. Um, and the formula is that what we're going to do is we are establishing a digital platform which will connect users to any number of nonprofit causes or humanitarian or environmental causes. And what we do is as these users are participating in that in as passive a way as possible, we just want super low friction or barrier to entry to do good. And then on top of that, we layer an economic incentive, which is either gift cards or digital items or coupon codes that are actually donated from different sponsors. And so what happens is now we are putting an extrinsic motivator, which is money, into people's hands. And with the mastery of all the gaming intrinsic motivators that we have, building that motivation model so that people are incentivized to build up their social reputation and, and contribute to causes. So the very first use case for us is actually a partnership with Boink. Uh, so Boink is a program that was uh, birthed out of UC Berkeley. And the idea is that any individual can donate their computing power from their PC or their laptop or their smartphone to scientific research. So Boink allows that to happen. And what we're doing is just uh, building a connection between them. So we can actually verify how much you've donated and we will reward you with ley line points. Mm -hmm. So once that's been established, now you're racking up these points, which is a representation of you doing good in the world. And now you use those points to claim these prizes, whether it's a gift card and a digital item. And these things will be worth real money that you can trade and start to profit off of. So at the end of the day, we want to build that core loop where you give and you receive. Whereas right now, if you want to be an altruist, you have to sacrifice either money or time, mm -hmm. or your skills to actually have an impact. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is that most people in the world don't have that, 
don't have that freedom. Yeah, a luxury. That's right. Yeah, I mean, Uh, as much as I'd love to be Bill and Melinda Gates, (laughs) I don't have that kind of money or time (laughs) to do that. (laughs) Exactly right. Um, So, so yeah, we want to really flip the script, and it is it is very possible. This, This is the funny thing: is that most people like hear this and they're like, "This is too good to be true." And when you just take a step back and think critically, this is absolutely possible. There's nothing stopping us from creating this. Um, and we are very fortunate that we're in this day and age where technology has you know, um, evolved to the point that we can create this kind of business model. Uh, so yeah, so it is interesting because I've seen this, I've seen these ideas, I've seen them in TED Talks and listened to researchers and academics like talk about this vision of the future. And I've been waiting, like waiting for this thing to happen, for like it to magically appear and someone solves a problem. <laughs> and then I realized like, shit, no one's going to be building this thing. Sorry for the... No <laughs> worries, sorry, sorry. That's sorry. my favorite word. You're good. Um, and I was like, all right, crap, no one, no one's building this thing. And it doesn't look like anyone's like going to take a step in. So fine, I guess we're going to have to do it. You know, it's like, it's our turn to, you know, step up and try and fix things. And I thought I was going to be alone in all this. It was very scary. So um, I, I, there's one thing I'm grateful for is that the team is here. It is big. It is fantastic. The culture is awesome. And I love everybody that's part of this organization. I love you guys. I love my team. Bye. <laughs> uh, we know several. We're yeah, big we, fans we, of them. We, can, we see them in, the, <laughs> in chat here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I hope I'm answering your question. Sorry. I, I yeah. tend to meander a bit. Well, that's, that's, and that's the thing that I was saying in the beginning, it's a big picture idea that has a lot of options of going different ways here and there. But the main goal is where the foundation you came up with, we want to do good. How do we do that with whatever resources we have? Because, you know, time and money are not a luxury a lot of people can give, Um, especially right now with everyone staying at home. Like I would love to volunteer and help out, but I also have to worry about not spreading and it's very, very complicated and to see something like this come out within, you, you started this year, didn't you? Yeah, it's uh, we've been moving hyper fast. So <laughs> I essentially resigned from Blizzard and we've been at this for just about three months. And oh my we've, gosh. Uh, <laughs> we've built a concept, we've produced like a pretty uh, high quality sizzle video, launched a GoFundMe page uh, and, oh, uh oh, did I think did we lose? Heather? You're good. You're good. We're so oh, okay. Okay, we're good. Um, yeah. So so we've accomplished quite a bit, and uh, I think it speaks to the ability and agility of startups these days, and the tools available to actually construct pretty um, scalable systems. Uh, and you know, like it's really funny. I you know I talked to the team about the fact that. Uh, we built more in three months than I had at like six years at Blizzard. <laughs> Just it's like the the red tape and you know all of the uh, complexity of the org. Um, but uh, but yeah, so yeah, that's kind of where we are right now. Um, and we're about to kick off our major GoFundMe campaign next week on Tuesday. So awesome. we're trying to get out there and get the word out um, and just show who we are, you know, because genuinely we're not in this for the money. We are in this to really help fix things. Um, so all of the money that we generate is just going to go to labor costs, the marketing prize pool, legal costs, server costs, and any excess that we make above uh, those operational costs will go right back to the people. Most of it in a form of just filling up the prize pool again to just distribute more money, uh, but also to commit to our carbon negative pledges as an organization. So very easy, you just donate and plant trees, which are the most uh, efficient ways to cost the carbon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but yeah, at the end of the day, it's like we're not looking to become millionaires or billionaires. We're looking to eradicate poverty or help eradicate poverty. There's a long uh, laundry list of things you could help fix. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> And, you know, it's like, you know, we're all in this together, you know, it's not, not like we were expecting to do fix everything, but man, we got to start somewhere. And uh, the great thing about technology now is it can scale really well. So once you build a platform, it's just about, about um, a question of driving user growth. And once you have user growth then your impact becomes exponential. Mm-hmm. So, so that's the, that's the game plan. That's the strategy. No, it's absolutely genius. And I was listening to some of your interviews you had prior 
one of the interesting things I thought I heard you mention, and if you can expand upon it, was that you have a lofty goal of $3 million. And with Kickstarters happening, I've heard of a D&D campaign earning that much money uh, on the internet somewhere. But <laughs> I heard something, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you raise half of the funds, you could stay self-sufficient. Is that correct? Um, I would say that $3 million would bring us to uh, sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, so we essentially, so we, we built out a five-year uh, business model, so a profit and loss model. Yeah. And essentially, you know, we build some basic assumptions on the number of users we'll end up acquiring and then what activity would those users have on a platform. So you kind of build a spreadsheet with all these different toggles to like adjust your numbers and everything like that. Um, so based off our more conservative estimates, we could hit profitability within year two or year three. And again, when we say profitability, it's just like we'll have more revenue than costs. Um, and then we just get to reallocate that uh, back to the people. So, so the interesting thing is that as a nonprofit, we've got a lot of great opportunity to generate funds. So, you know, what we're doing now is essentially building our seed fund with this first crowdfunding campaign, but there's actually nothing stopping us from continuing to run, um, uh, fundraisers, mm -hmm. uh, which is what all nonprofits do is, uh, <laughs> the problem is they did never have a business model beyond that. It's just like, give us money, give us money. And then they can't generate any. Uh, so we want to make sure that we can operate sustainably without asking for anything. And anything we ask beyond that, it's just gravy. Um, so, you know, some insider info or nuggets is that uh, Blizzard actually runs a lot of charity pet sales, as I'm sure you're familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, and that generates a lot of money. We're talking like anywhere from 3 to $10 million like that for one item. Yep. And so when you think about that, um, that user experience, um, we have the same value proposition, which is, hey, we can sell items that are specifically for a cause. Um, and then we just add a ton of value right into that item as well. Like it could be, you know, a bunch of gift cards or a bunch of codes for a bunch of games uh, in the same way that, you know, Humble Bundle ends up giving yeah. us like ridiculously crazy value for that bundle mm -hmm. for like a dollar donation, right? Um, so that, that is a mechanism through which we can continue to fundraise over time with very specific goals to say, hey, if you help us achieve this goal, it keeps our operation running and we just have this target budget for the year. Uh, so that's one pathway. Uh, another is through sponsorships. So because these different brands and sponsors want to be able to speak to this audience and attach their brand to something positive in the world, mm -hmm. they're willing to pay for that. Um, and you know, this is like another, you know, I'm going to share lots of like business nuggets from the yeah. inside. This is your experience coming into the forefront. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, are so, these the companies that are listed on the bottom of your, your webpage? Correct. Yeah, okay. Um, and yeah, we've got about, I don't know, half a dozen more that are in the pipe and pretty close to, okay. um, closing, but our list is nearing a hundred at this point, not necessarily all of it, but like, we've got a lot of connections out in the, um, I don't know. We just built up a lot of connections, so I think uh, things are looking pretty good in our the pipeline. And again, our business team is awesome. Eugenia, Mark, love you guys. Um, the uh, sorry, I was uh, talking about sponsors. Yes. Yeah. So there's uh, there's actually three really big benefits for them. Uh, one is that this is you know all about like virtue signaling and their PR strategy. Yeah, we're doing something good for the world, so they want to you know check off that box. Uh, the second is getting their brand in front of new audiences. So it's very much about brand acquisition and engagement for the people that are playing their stuff. Uh, the third is that it's a tax write-off. So anything that they donate <laughs> is a big tax advantage for these companies. So they love that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's a very much a win-win scenario for the sponsors. And these folks will pay top dollar to reach this audience because the younger gamers, the ones that are millennials and Gen Z, mm -hmm. they are they, like 90% ad blockers. Uh, so paid media doesn't work for them. They don't watch TV. They're all cord cutters. So all the cable uh, stuff doesn't work either. Yeah. So they have a very difficult time reaching this audience. The best mm -hmm. is like TikTok and you know some of the newer social media, but most brands suck at that. So they're like, hey, we just want to reach this audience and they will drop down, drop like 100K just to have their logo attached to a stream. 
So, yeah. so that's what we're going to be utilizing. Like I'm just taking advantage of all these private sector tricks and techniques and like ways to negotiate business. And I'm just saying, let's bring it to the nonprofit world and start helping people because there is way too much money flowing out there that is not making a big difference uh, in the world. So, so yeah, that, that's another big strategy in that sponsors can actually generate a lot of the revenue because they could just donate a bunch of cash and then we can turn that into gift cards, uh, like Bitcoin gift cards, for example. Um, and then that just becomes part of the cash prize. And now when you think about that, so imagine like a $50 Bitcoin gift card and imagine someone in a developing nation like India in a village that's gets that prize uh, just by leaving their phone on overnight. And that $50 is already like a month's salary for that individual. Like that is the kind of powerful impact. You know, it's very lopsided in terms of what money means in North America or the US mm -hmm. for yeah. these developing nations. So, you know, we obviously want to like help out all markets, but when you think about the opportunity to affect lives and improve a situation, not just for the individual, but their families and their communities, this is so powerful that <laughs> it's, and it's just like, you just leave your phone on, that's it. And then you can transform your life. That's the kind of uh, experience we want to create. And that's the kind of impact we want to have at an order of magnitude higher than anything we've seen. That's like, that's where we're trying to go. Um, and I think we can make a big dent. So yeah, so yeah, we're trying to bring all these brands to give us all the money. Yeah. We want to <laughs> and I just throw it out there to, to the not rich. Yeah, and, and it's two parts. Like one, I know a lot of companies want to give back, but how to do that besides just throw money at things, you don't know if that money is gonna be used correctly or how it could be well allocated. And having a channel like Leyline hopefully can be that hub of we will trust us with this and we will spread the good um and then i love the idea of helping like with a cell phone or with your computer like my computer right now is in sleep mode at home i could have been having the internet connect through it and uh, contribute something and i think the biggest thing i loved with COVID, especially and you did this was where you used your cpu for what's the tech term folding or Fol folding i used folding at home yeah, yeah. And, and now with Boink, which I love that name. Thank you. Uh, is it Berkeley? Yeah. 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 Thank you, yeah. Berkeley. Uh, it, it's, it's such a great idea because why not? Like we're more connected than ever. My students could even use like their phones or their iPads and earn some gift cards maybe. You that know, is I, I have so many students that would love to jump on that. Absolutely. I mean, you could be racking up ley line points right now on his stream. <laughs> I uh, signed up for Alpha. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we got we got you for sure. We're gonna hook you up with the Alpha invites. And in case any of your listeners want to get me Alpha, just want to call out there that we've already got a thousand dollar prize pool of gift cards ready to go, and you can earn your your uh, your items. So essentially, what we're building on is on blockchain. These are non fungible tokens. So when you own that, you own that forever. Even if Leyline disappears off the planet, you can still like own it and exchange it on marketplaces or utilize in other games. Uh, so as an alpha tester, you will be granted some very early exclusive digital items that will never be replicated ever again in the history of the world. <laughs> so just saying, if anyone's interested in jumping in alpha, there's a pretty good value prop uh, for helping us, uh, you know, test the product and everything like that. Yeah, so, for sure. And there's also the yeah, newsletter that you can sign up for on the website. I signed up for that too, because I check my emails all the time. All right, right on. Yes. Uh, yeah, you can reach us anyway. You can hit up our social channels. You can email us uh, at hello at leyline.gg. Go to our website, sign up for the newsletter. We will respond to everything, uh, I guarantee. Um, Sorry, I. what were we talking about before? We've been covering all over. Um, oh, okay. So we talked a little bit about Boink. <laughs> I love my name. Oh, yes. Um, yes. How, and, and I'm a teacher at heart. So how is the academia world kind of stepping into this? Because I saw you also worked with other universities for like that CPU superpower computer thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it, it's been very, it's very cool experience to get into that space because Boink is actually just this uh, platform where all these different scientific groups plug in. So 
you know, we've got folks uh, over at the Max Planck Institute of Astrophysics, and, you know, there's climate science modeling, there's cancer research. So uh, all these different groups have very different approaches and perspectives. Uh, so we are basically trying to build those uh, partnerships and basically say, hey, this is legit. And academics are, you know, really appreciating what we're trying to do here and improve. Yeah. Uh, but the other big focus in this student realm is that we're, we're creating an open knowledge project. And it's also open source. So it means that everyone's going to be able to see our source code for the entire platform. So it's full transparency. Wow. Um, the community uh, will be able to participate in building um, the platform. And we're still figuring out the protocol and how to, you know, essentially enable an army of engineers to, to help us build this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but the open knowledge component of it is we intend to basically make public as much knowledge as we can. And it's under the principle that we believe knowledge should be free for people that need to learn and develop their skills. They should just have access to that. And frankly, that already exists today because the internet just gives you all the information you need. Wow. Um, yeah, you just but... gotta find it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like my college degree, I think I've YouTubed all of it. <laughs> like 20 minutes. Yeah. Same, same I'm not, here. I'm not saying no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, but the thing is like, you know, that I learned in management theory is that when you're absorbing knowledge, there's different tiers. Um, one is like, you could just read the material and like get the academic, um, mm -hmm. training. Second is you can have a mentor to kind of guide you through the process and tell you, this is how you do things. And the third is you just do it and you experience it. And that is the number one way to learn. It is so disproportionate to other learning methods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to the career, then the best way to get students to understand a job is to give them one and to let them fail and learn and experience that. So what we're building out is essentially an apprenticeship program where Amazing. if anyone wants to be a part of the organization, they are free to join as a lurker. We'll pop them into our Slack channels, onto our Notion and Wiki and Knowledge Base all of our project management tools. And, you know, we essentially have um, a very interesting gig economy that we've built internally, where we call it the quest board. So now imagine in your tavern, and you got all these quests posted up, and you as a quest hunter will find the ones that are relative to your skill set. So say I'm an engineer, I'm going to look for projects where it's like, hey, build a website and the team is an engineer, designer, project manager, etc. Um, so we want to create this environment where people are free to explore all these different skill areas. They can plug into different teams that have these veterans doing marketing or community development or engineering or design or art. Um, and so what we're doing is connecting people together to, you know, train each other or to learn from each other and yeah. see how the professionals get it done. And this, this really uh, resonated with me because at TESFA, when I was working with a lot of the students, the, one of the biggest feedback points was, hey, listen, I'm a student. I have no idea what I'm going to do when I get out of here. Uh, and they just wanted uh, to talk to people that were experts. They just wanted to see how they did their work. They want to get some hands-on experience. Everybody in the in that entire TESPA network was really uh, really asking for that kind of experience, mm -hmm. and so to me, we can do that. We can create that opportunity, and in fact, many people on a team are uh, experiencing that. So, yeah, actually, I, I would recommend that some some other team members speak um, oh. at some point about it. Uh, so, yeah, we're we're kind of like trying filing that out and so far it's working really well and uh, we'll continue to scale and scale as all these uh, tests go forward. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, we learned a lot by working at Blizzard and understanding how to scale a giant organization globally. Um, so it was very easy for us to move into a remote uh, only culture and then make sure that we had really good culture, process, structure, etc. I'm looking forward to those testimonials. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so pay, pay testimonials uh, <laughs> in full disclosure. No. <laughs> uh, no, that is so amazing, and I think especially I remember talking to like my junior high kids, and they're like, "I want to be in esports or video games." And I'm like, "Well, go to college still." It's nice <laughs> yeah, that you can do exactly. both. Um, it's yeah. accessible. Yeah, and it, one thing I'm, I am excited about is that I think that. Um, education overall has a chance to really evolve. 
Um, and, you know, I, I try to think about uh, many students, particularly in the U.S. that are going into the college now, that is a tough, tough sell because one is basically watching. Oh, we lost you for a sec there, but we were talking about uh, college um, and going to and school. Cost of it. Oh, there we go. We hear you. We just lost your video. Oh, sorry. There we go. That. No worries. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so um, back on the college thing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you're spending four years. Uh, you're probably going to be in quarantine for most of it. Uh, and yeah. then you're you're coming out of college racked with crazy amounts of debt. You know, we're talking about like, you know, 50, 100K in student yeah. loan debt. That is like, you cannot even erase it. Um, and then there's no job opportunities because we're in this economic downturn. And then even if there is an opportunity, you need like three to five years experience to even get in the door. So it is a nightmare for students getting out of the college. And so, you know, my take is we need a very different approach to give people, uh, you know, a springboard to, to start their careers. And I think, you know, right now, corporations aren't necessarily going to prioritize that because for them, it's like, hey, slim pickings. I got a lot of unemployed people. I don't need to, like, worry about, <laughs> you know, it's like marketing and getting people because, like, mm -hmm. there are tons of desperate people that will take a low salary because they're, you they know, something. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to sustain uh, a hobby if there's no funding behind it or, or income behind it. And that's where I think even for Jimmy and I, like we've, this is our hobby. We have day jobs for, you know, to pay the bills, but being able, and especially with Leyline, you can partake in doing the good and networking without having to invest out of pocket. Cause I think one of the, the team members said their favorite thing about Leyline is the opportunity to help out, but not necessarily give funds of themselves. And that's what the Slack can be or giving feedback or uh, he even mentioned some possible like physical doing good. Oh, yes. Can you expand on that idea? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, kind of going with the theme of we're, we're a, a pretty agnostic platform, and it's just a question of what causes we want to plug right into it and essentially just fuel it with our economy of doing good things. And so uh, what we're going to be testing out very soon are two things. One is we're going to do a daily exercise check-in because uh, we just want to see it's like, hey, can we reward people for exercising every day? And yeah, for our alpha tests and beta tests, it'll be, you know, on our system. But that gives us a lot of data. It will understands like, hey, are people coming back to visit to check in to say, hey, I did an hour of exercise today. Give me my 10 ley line points. <laughs> uh, and maybe they're a bunch of cheaters, but that's fine. We just want to know people are going to care and that are interested in it. And that tees us up to set up partnerships with fitness trackers like Fitbit or Apple Watch that have real exercise data that we just say, okay, these people want to validate that they exercise. Boom, we've got the connection and now I got a bunch of ley line points. So we're running those experiments now and collecting some data. Uh, or rather, we're going to soon. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I, uh, speaking ahead of turn here. Um, but the other uh, partnership we're aiming for is actually with the Red Cross. So the Red Cross has a full database of every person's uh, blood donations. And we don't need any access to that uh, you know, private data. All we need is for a person to just do an account connection to the Red Cross database or to their yeah. API. And every time that someone donates blood, we can just give them a bunch of ley line points and like give them a unique, super cool item that makes their <laughs> avatar and items look just badass and sparkle and glow and all these cool things. Yeah. And yeah. cookies. Yes, exactly. Or <laughs> tease it, <laughs> whatever they have. You know, I, I mean, I love blood donations, so I know yeah. all the snacks that they leave out there. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I, I think that's the big idea, which is, you know, we will continue to establish new, more and more partnerships with different uh, organizations that adhere to the same values of transparency and are actually having an impact. Um, and then we just say, we're going to supercharge you. Like, we are here to make your life amazing and your program to just go to the moon. And we're going to shove a million people here and just incentivize them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with, like, lots of money. Uh, and not, it's not even money, too. You know, one thing I really want to emphasize is that, you know, for gamers, and, you know, I've I've been a part of all the research teams and data science teams looking at the numbers of what motivates users. Uh, here, here's an interesting fact. Um, with Activision, Blizzard, and King combined, with that acquisition, that 
Activision Blizzard is probably the sixth or seventh largest organization that contains user data. So it is up there with oh. Google, Facebook, Apple in terms of the amount of user data available. And games in particular have such incredible amounts of engagement that we can see a lot of what's happening in the game. So mm -hmm. for example, the number of Hearthstone cards that are played in a particular session on average. And you can see visually like yeah. what the stats are and then we use that to tune and balance. Yeah, so, I mean, I do love when Blizzard does come out with those infographs <laughs> of like stuff yeah. like that. It's really cool to see. I think they recently did that for the Shadowlands beta or something like that. They're like, oh, players killed X million of mobs or whatever. It's totally. Kind of, kind of cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. So, like yeah, the, uh, excuse me, the uh, business intelligence and data science teams are pretty hardcore over there. I mean, Blizzard... All the different groups of Blizzard is really, really um, high level AAA talent. So yeah. um, mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate to have been exposed to that stuff. Uh, but coming back to the amount of information that uh, game companies have, it's actually very easy to do a lot of data analysis and understand, OK, got it. This is what motivates an individual. So take, for example, um, designing like a World of Warcraft dungeon. Uh, we are able to run A-B tests so quickly that we already know, okay, got it. The vast majority of users prefer this dungeon or prefer this quest or storyline. And then so you could do that basically an infinite number of times. It's just software. So and we're at the point where we've tuned the motivation models so we know exactly what's going to keep the person engaged for the longest amount of time. Uh, so again, like all techniques that can be very much abused and instead we want to flip that and just say, okay, on Leyline as a platform, we want to speak to the same motivators. And so the question is, what are those motivators? And that are thing, those are things like, uh, I want to boost up my social reputation. I want to connect with friends. I want to have an impact on the world. I want to solve really cool and unique challenges and like really test my brain. So we are going to just provide all those experiences, the social connection, the cooperation on solving big problems and challenges. So essentially, your uh, Leyline profile is going to be your digital resume. So, you know, I, I'm sure you guys know the World of Warcraft Armory, the website with oh, your yeah. avatar and all your items. Yeah, uh, yeah my, that was a fun project to build, by the way. Really love that one. I can I talk about it. About it. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of nightmare uh you know, 48 hour crunches. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh. um, but, uh, but yeah, in essence, uh, you're going to be able to see your avatar and a digital items that you have created from your ley line points. Mm -hmm. And you will also have a dashboard of all your stats. So it's like, hey, here is who I am. Like, I am Jeremy, and this is my digital avatar. And this is all the good I've done in the world. I have contributed a thousand hours of computing power to help solve cancer and to help solve COVID-19. I have That's donated awesome. 10,000 gallons of blood throughout my life. Like that <laughs> is to me, you know? Um, and, you know and we can plug in any number of games. Again, we're a platform, so we just have an API for games to plug in with their stats. So for example, chess is open source. So we could plug that in super easy and your stats of like how many chess games you played will be on your digital resume. So say you've played, you know, 500 games of chess and your win ratio is 95%. You are a grandmaster. Congratulations. <laughs> I was about to say, you're pretty darn good at chess. You're winning 95% <laughs> of your games. See, I'm warming up to solitaire to prep for this. Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, it all comes together. <laughs> so, um, do you have any plans for the type of games that you guys are hoping to do? Or is that still in the works? Yeah. The team? So, so there's a there's an interesting strategy here, uh, and it's two pronged. One is that uh, ultimately we want to have distributed computing available just directly in a browser, because at mm -hmm. the moment you have to download a desktop app or install a mobile app on Android, yeah. um, which has like barriers to entry. Like people don't like that. So instead, theoretically, we can run distributed computing just in any browser tab, which allows you to be on any platform. And so the key is, okay, how do we keep that browser tab open? Mm -hmm. And so oh, yeah. the sauce is put a game in there. So now we're going to have the Leyline Arcade, and it's essentially an infinite number of games. And so we're going to work with indie developers or students doing game jams. Uh, but one of the bigger partnerships is um, science games. 
So there are actually many games out there developed by research teams and scientists that are literally like having you solve science problems. Um, probably the most recent great example is with Borderlands 3. Uh, so if anyone's played that, uh, in like the NPC area, there's an arcade cabinet where you're literally playing a puzzle game and it's actually you mapping the genomes of your uh, microbiome. So <laughs> it's funny because oh. the, the data set is produced by analyzing a bunch of shit, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. Um, but yeah, so we're partnered with a group that built that, um, uh, that game uh, for, uh, for Borderlands. And so we are going to basically have science games embedded onto the Leyline Arcade. So here's, here's the scenario. You as a user will go on, play a puzzle game that's literally solving science, and in the background, you're donating to science just for doing nothing. And you're earning Leyline points, and you're beefing up your resume with all the good that you're doing. That is the value proposition. And it's such a slam dunk <laughs> if we can, well, when we pull up, pull it off, like that's the vision <laughs> yeah. for the arcade. I have um, to ask really quick, my teacher brain is spinning. If you're telling me I'm teaching sixth grade science right now, if I have my, if, in theory, I could tell my kids go on this website, play this game, and then they their points could be like their extra credit if it's science, dude. That is correct. Teachers. There you go. <laughs> I want teacher. that. <laughs> I want to yeah. that, please. That is that is the experience we want to create. Yeah. And again, it's just this um, it's this fountain of abundance because once you put the formula in place, uh, the value just generates uh, on its own. Um, there there is one caveat though. So the challenge is we will be producing real money. So mm. there is a challenge with miners. <laughs> like I, yeah, I don't know really how we're going to uh, address that, but uh, it is in our list of legal challenges that we are currently yeah. uh, getting down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, to, to begin with, uh, we're going to have to stick to, um, you know, non-miners. And, uh, but I, you know, I, many things are possible. Many I things are different. recommend difficult. things <laughs> that their parents allow them with permission. That's totally fine. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we should totally connect on like figuring out the there we best go. Way. We, we yeah. can teach in Minecraft. Why not do this? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think uh, and you know, I I am so um, I have so much respect for you, Heather, for being a teacher because it is one of the most important jobs on the planet. And to me, I think it's really important that we also invest in it in education because uh, this is a very new world that we're stepping into and. Um, we have to think and adapt differently in how we're providing knowledge and teaching and helping people to grow. Uh, so yeah, I care a lot about this topic. Um, and so some cool things that we're already doing, one of our other sponsors is uh, Geek Therapeutics. Um, and so uh, his name is Dr. Bean, which I love. That's He's a great a name. <laughs> Um, and essentially what he's done is he specialized in creating therapeutic practices and courses that are centered on geek culture. So he's written a number of books and like teaches like therapists how to infuse uh, things like the hero's narrative or like Link's adventure or Final Fantasy and like tying it in to how to help you have a better mental uh, health status. Uh, sorry, I lost my own words. No, mental, um, mental mindset. Yeah, but he stumbled across us because he actually trademarked Leyline early on. And then I was like, oh, shit, he trademarked it. But then he reached out and said, hey, you know what? I love what you're doing. Let's partner up and just use the name. And I want to sponsor. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Out of nowhere. Um, and so now he's actually donated some of his courses, which are like 120 a pop um, as part of our prize pool. So oh, wow. we'll actually, uh, be able to, you know, and to me, it's like, I really love what he's doing because we are going to face one of the greatest mental health uh, epidemics that we've ever seen. Yep. Um, so this, like the effort that he's doing is going to potentially be a very important uh, function in our society. So it's a great like situation. And I see the same opportunities with anyone that's creating uh, educational content. Um, yeah. So one of my other partners that we uh, were working with back at Blizzard and TESPA uh, were different educational foundations that were actually trying to build content that infused esports and gaming into education. 
And so a lot of these teachers that I met up with, particularly in high school, were, were simply saying that, listen, we've got so many dis, dis, uh, disengaged kids yep. that have any number of challenges which are blocking them from learning. And they set up a gaming club and they found engagement just shoot up like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, because once they found a uh, connection and something that they're passionate about, then they can enable learning and introduce these new topics. So my hope is that we can actually start to host educational content as well and in reward completion of those courses with leyline points. So that's very easy to do. I mean, you just plug in the, uh, the media and attach it to our economic system and you're good to go. So speaking my dream. This is <laughs> oh man, that is amazing and super. And I think the best part is when I was listening to a lot of your interviews before this and researching it, a lot of this stuff is obtainable. The the you know the cryptocurrency, the the doing good, the charities, the the points and and all this and the education you just said is super doable. And it just as you said, we needed someone to do a TED talk on it to put it together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's absolutely right. That is absolutely right. Um, and yeah, I think um, that that's what uh, I have the most hope about is that we've done a lot of thinking around what it's going to take to make this happen. And we've modeled out a lot of different risk scenarios and thought through like what are the big pitfalls. And there is pretty much nothing that's going to stop us. Uh, all we need is the will and obviously a little bit of capital to like pay pay the, the team. Uh, but this is very achievable. Like we are, we're doing a research and uh, we know this can happen. So now we're just pushing and we're going to build this sucker as fast as we can. Um, so yeah, I'm, I mean, again, like we should totally talk more, Heather. I'd love to get more of your <laughs> insights and thoughts around uh, education and what we can do there. Uh, Cause I think it's critical. It is really critical. So you guys, you guys have the GoFundMe started online. People can donate now if they want to. Um, that is correct. Uh, I, I will say this: uh, we are planning a pretty big blast on Tuesday, mm-hmm. kind of you know trying to create a bit of a viral moment and also activating a lot of the partners and sponsors that we have. Mm-hmm. So, if possible, if if folks can kind of like hold on to Tuesday to okay. unleash, that would be perfect. Um, yes, sir. I and. Can. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody listening, again, thank you just for listening to this. And um, it's okay if you don't have any money to donate. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are other things you could absolutely do. And again, we also welcome anybody into our community. We've got a Discord channel where all of our alpha testers are popping in. If you want to get involved, that's a great place to start because you can actually talk directly to the, the dev team and all of the different team members there. Uh, so yeah, and happy to kind of show you the ropes and give you the tour and let's see what happens. Um, yeah. Um, and I feel like we're almost at an hour. We could talk for more hours on end. I, I'm cool to keep talking as long as you guys. <laughs> so and, you know, if, if people on Twitch are like, get the GTFO. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> no one's saying that. But we also like... <laughs> We also, all three of us have work tomorrow too. So it's also like, we like to keep our shows at around an hour if possible. Yeah. Okay, um, no. But before we go, we do know you have plans this weekend. What are you working on this weekend? You tweeted about it once or twice. There's an event going on? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, sorry, I, I blanked. Um, no problem, so, it's late. Uh, actually, uh, good friends of ours, uh, a lot of alumni from, from Tesla and Blizzard as well, uh, they're running an event called Area of Effect. And they're also very like-minded and just want to improve the world. So they're dedicating all the different proceeds and sponsorships to specific charities. Uh, so they're doing a number of things. They're doing so hosting some game jams and D&D sessions, but they're also doing some panels uh, because they're speaking to a pretty large student audience. So we'll be over there um, with a number of Leyline team members and we talking or hosting a panel talking about uh, using gaming for good. So very, <laughs> very apropos. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I believe that's going to be at two o'clock uh, Pacific time it on is. Saturday. I got and, you uh, It's on oh, stream sorry? two stage. It's on stream number two on Saturday at 2.30 to 3.30 Pacific. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that'll be a, a really fun panel. I think we're going to be able to talk about a lot of cool things and not just Leyline uh, itself because um, there, there's a huge opportunity. Uh, you know, by the numbers, there's 2.7 billion gamers on the planet. 
and we're barely leveraging the capacity <laughs> yeah. power, not even just computing power, but just pure brain power. Like we solve crazy problems in a digital world, like ridiculously mm -hmm. complex problems. And so now imagine tying just like 1% of that towards real world problems. Holy crap, what can we solve? I can finally uh, say with our powers combined. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'm proud of that. I, I, I get a lot of shit. I get a lot of shit for like being Captain Planet or rather like, you know, the whole Captain Planet combination. I'm always like the heart guy who's like totally useless. <laughs> you needed <laughs> him. <laughs> um, but uh, shoot, what was I going to say? Um, with the AOE conference, uh, yeah, so we'll be there at 2.30 and, like, really happy to kind of talk. And I don't know if we'll be able to do Q&A, but, uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll stick around and be available for that. And I know I signed up for it already. I think you have to, like, sign up for, like, a ticket and admittance. And yeah, and it's, it's all games. free. So yes. it's just uh, registration. Um, but, frankly, I, I have not registered yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think they'll let you in still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> but uh, it sounds um, like a lot of fun, especially since we can't go to conventions. Lord, do we miss those? Yeah. Uh, it'll be nice to do something, you know, geeky again, even if it's yeah. just our own couches. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, and yeah, we, you know, we're trying to think about that too, because, you know, since we're a remote company, uh, we don't have any physical interaction with each other. So we got to think about what are the ways we build a culture and humanize each other. Uh, so what we're trying to do now are just like regular game nights, uh, like Wednesday evenings. And uh, one of our uh, one of our teammates, uh, Boogie, is just a brilliant guy with these ideas and created uh, a totally revamped version of chess. Uh, so... <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, we're, we're so awesome. we're prototyping a bunch of different games that we might eventually build onto the Leyline Arcade. Um, but what we're also planning to do is community nights. So we'll probably rotate every other Wednesday and just have like community team members uh, mingle and hang out with other devs and marketers and all that stuff like that. Because um, we really just want to invest in the community. That's the most important thing to us, which is, um, you know, the folks that are going to help us build this thing are so important because they believe, they care, and they're going to be the biggest advocates for us, like, because they know that we're genuine and honest about this thing. So the only, the best way to, to show that we're honest and genuine is, like, talk to people all the time and listen to them. Uh, so we really want to invest in that. You know, we're, we're not putting money, much money into, like, media or, like, mm -hmm. Facebook ads, which is, like, um, oh, I can... Expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, just even, like, uh, from an ethical standpoint, I, I mean, like, again, I could talk a lot about the guts of yeah. how, oh, you yeah. know, these social media companies are using our data. It's it's scary. Yeah. Um, I happen to come back on another podcast and, you know, talk about it there. Yeah. <laughs> that would actually be a lot of fun. Yeah, we we can uh, do that in the Discord group and just talk about stuff hours on end on our phones. Oh yes, hell oh, yes. And we've joined that uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah, you know, like having um, seen a lot of how like AAA marketing functions, like I know what's very effective. Um, and yes, yeah, certainly paid media does a job really well, but I would prefer a much more genuine approach to mm. things. Um, and so that's why we're just pouring a lot, you know, we built up a really large community team because that's where the real investment should be. Let's invest in people, uh, on the employee side and also invest in people on a community side. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's the, that's the approach. Yeah. And I think let's make sure we get all the social outlets that you guys have. You guys have a Twitter and an Instagram at Leyline NP. Uh, you have a YouTube a Facebook, Discord, and LinkedIn. Is yes. that correct? Okay. Yeah, those are all linked on leyline.gg. Love the website, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. GG is genius. Email yeah. is at hello at leyline.gg. That is correct. Okay. And that if anyone correct. wants to follow you, where, where can they find you? That's a good question. I mean, like, I've got profiles all there. Honestly, I don't, I try to avoid social media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing Twitter might be the uh -huh. probably uh, it's Twitter and Discord. I think are probably going to be the best ways to, to engage. Okay, uh, and I'll leave everything open if you guys want to DM me. Uh, totally cool. Like I, I want you know again like full transparency. That's I just want to talk to people and just say what's on my mind and what the plans are yeah. so that way 
uh, if you know, here, here's one of the things is that this idea can feel like it's too good to be true. And I get a lot, feel like a lot. And so the one way to counter it is that, hey, I'm, we're not a scam. Let's like, look at everything we're doing. <laughs> like, we're not exactly. hide anything. Uh, so I think that's our primary foil to uh, skeptics is just say, here, here it all is, you know. Um, so yeah, Twitter, Discord, um, I, I'll, I guess I'll share with you guys uh, after the fact all the different uh, profile yeah. handles. I will post okay. them on the YouTube channel for sure. And we've yeah. had them like floating in chat here and there. Um, okay. But yeah, everything's found on leyline.gg. That's where we pulled everything. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. And, uh, so yeah, I think that'll wrap it up for yeah. this episode of uh, Nexus Podcast. And you can always find old episodes at nexuspodcast.com and youtube.com slash DJ Tyrant. Yeah. Um, and we do record live on twitch.tv slash DJ Tyrant. And thanks everyone for coming by. We okay. appreciate you. And it's been uh, a while. Jeremy, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your, your vision on Leyline and uh what the future can hold in in these uh challenging times <laughs> <laughs> yes yes indeed but yeah, yeah positive vision of future. we want to create that positive vision of future and we can do it together uh this is very very doable and yeah. uh we're not a lot of effort too so <laughs> that's Definitely. that's the most important part right because we're all fairly I would not say lazy, but we're very efficient these days. <laughs> there well, you go. I've yeah. Heard, I've heard y'all have phones. So I think yes. you're covered. That is the key. I'm ending with that. Um, I'm ending with that. I just yeah. All right. We'll see you next time. And thanks to <laughs> yeah. everyone. Well, and there, Jimmy, thank you so much for having me. I'm right. really honored. And thank you, everybody listening. All right. Thank you. Thank you. See you Bye. next time. Bye. Good night. <laughs>